sometimes you get questions from uh, viewers and, <laughs> and you can't help but think, why didn't I think of that? A viewer uh, commented on a recent video in which I was talking about this Nano VNA uh, H4 and the question that uh, he asked is, or actually his comment was, uh, I'm convinced that I need one of these uh, devices. Uh, the uh, <laughs> He was talking about, I think, this one. But he wasn't, but I'm not sure if I know why. And it occurred to me that uh, depending on each person's individual experience and training and education and so on, sometimes you can f fail to pick up something at the beginning and I know this happened to me all the time in school. Uh, you know, if I was asleep the first day in class, sometimes it wasn't until the, class, the uh, semester was over that I finally realized, oh, you know, I wish I had known that. And it was something that was said at the very beginning. I'm not saying that I've said everything in the beginning, but uh, the idea is sometimes it's good to just go back to basics. And so that's what this series is going to be about. I'm going to be calling it What's a VNA good for? Now, a VNA is a vector network analyzer. Don't worry if you don't know what that means or what it's good for. We'll talk about all of that. But there are a few things that we need to talk about at the beginning to, uh, to be able to understand the, the nomenclature and all of the uh, things that uh, that go on. So what do we have here? Well, down here we have the Nano VNA H. Next to it is the Nano VNA H4. I have done videos on each of these. Up here is the Mini VNA Tiny. I've done videos on it. Next to it is the Analog Devices uh, Analog Discovery. Next to it is the Analog Discovery 2, also by, I said Analog Devices. It does contain an Analog Devices uh, chip and a Xilinx chip, but it's uh, it's made by a company called Digilent. Uh, they didn't put their name on originally, but the, over here they did. Next to that is a Rig Expert AA230. And uh, I'm not sure whether I've done videos on that, but W2AEW has many. And up here is a Mini Circuits uh, SWR, uh, the way it's hooked up, is an SWR uh, setup for a spectrum analyzer. So what are these things good for? Well, one of the things that they are good for is matching, and the other is transmission. We'll talk about that later. But basically, these devices are either standalone, like the Rig Expert, or they connect to a computer, like the Analog Discovery uh, and the Mini VNA Tiny. Now the Nano VNA and, and the H4 version of the Nano VNA can connect to computers or they can be standalone. Finally, notice that some of these devices have two terminals, but this one only has one connector. We'll find out some more about that when we get a little further along. I thought I would begin with this unit. This is a a Rigol spectrum analyzer. It's a DSA815 and attached to it is the uh, mini circuits uh, I'm going to call it SWR bridge. Uh, I don't want to introduce too many new terms all at once. And what you see is the uh, standing wave ratio across a, a range of frequencies. 
you notice up here it says VSWR on. V stands for voltage and SWR stands for standing wave ratio. So voltage standing wave ratio. You don't need to know what that means, but amateur radio operators have been using this to measure antennas and transmission lines and, and other things for a long time. I started with this because I wanted to be sure that you understood that there are lots of alternatives to a vector network analyzer depending on what it is you are doing. Mostly we're going to be talking about uh, one or more of these devices. These are vector network analyzers and we'll define that uh, a little bit later, but the first thing to answer the question that the viewer asked, uh, the comment, there are vector network analyzers and several of these alternatives are good for two things, matching and transmission. Now, in, in both cases you are measuring the matching. So, for example, you may want to match something to an antenna or look at the the frequency characteristics of an antenna. It, it's, it's, uh, it's gain and phase. You might be working with a feed line, like a piece of coax, or in the old days it was a uh, open wire line. And by the way, that's where the term standing wave ratio comes from. The, uh, in, the, in the very early days of radio, the way that they measured uh, match was they literally went out and walked along the feed line, which was usually a, an open wire line hung up in the air somewhere, with a, a wave meter, just a little, uh, it's actually no more than a diode and a, and a meter, uh, with a small pickup loop, and they would measure the radiation underneath the feed line. As you walk along, you find peaks and valleys. And that is where standing wave ratio comes from. They would measure the ratio of the peaks to the valleys. Uh, you can also be interested in measuring the input characteristics of something like an amplifier, a mixer, a receiver, or whatever. Or the output characteristics like an attenuator, a mixer, etc. And of course, you can measure the output of amplifiers and uh, transmitters and things as well. Here we're not talking about measuring their power. We're talking about measuring their impedance. In other words, how this device reacts to frequency, phase, and uh, the impedance that's either driving or is being driven with. We'll talk more about that. But matching, you're generally only interested in one device and you're trying to figure out what do I have to do to match this device to something else. Transmission, once again, you're only talking about one device, but in this case you're talking about measuring something going all the way through the device. So you're not just interested in a single point like the antenna or a feed line. Instead, you're interested in an input and an output. And you'd like to know both gain and phase information. Uh, phase information is very important. The uh, spectrum analyzer I showed you a minute ago does not give you phase information. And uh, that is why it is not called a vector network analyzer. You could call it a scalar network analyzer because it can measure gain, it can measure uh, the, uh, the, the magnitude of the impedance, but it can't measure the phase of an impedance. Examples of where you might use this is an amplifier looking for the frequency and phase response. What, you put in a signal and then you measure the output over a range of frequencies and you want to know how much has the gain changed and how much has the phase changed. Similarly, an attenuator, for example, you might want to know how much is the loss at a particular frequency or a set of frequencies and what is the phase change. So here are some examples of things that you might want to measure. You might want to measure the input of an amplifier. Normally what you're interested there is called S11. 
Now, S11 is simply uh, a measure. Don't worry about defining it. We'll talk about that in a future uh, part. The second thing you might want to do is measure the gain and phase of an amplifier. We talked about that a minute ago. And uh, that is called S21. But once again, we'll talk about that. Uh, the input of an attenuator, once again, S11. The output of an attenuator, S22. The transmission of a filter, S21. What does all that mean? Well, before we go to that, let's just take a look at the, the options we have. We can use an SWR meter. It only measures in one frequency. It does not give us any phase information. Or we can use something like a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator or a so-called uh, network analyzer or scalar network analyzer. And by that scalar, what they mean is no phase. It measures over a frequency range, but doesn't give you any phase information. And finally, a vector network analyzer is just like a scalar network analyzer, except in addition to giving you measurements over a frequency range, it also gives you the phase over that same frequency range. So here's what we mean by match and transmission. Match is where you want to find out the characteristics of a device because you either already know or you intend to measure the characteristics of another device and you want to match those two devices together. This device can be something like an antenna. This might be a transmitter. And this is the typical measurement of SWR that ham radio operators use. You want to match a transmitter to an antenna, usually through a feed line. Or you might want to match an RF amplifier to a mixer in a receiver or a mixer to an IF amplifier. Anytime that you have something that operates over a range of frequencies and you want to match it, you use something like a vector network analyzer. The other thing you might want to measure is transmission. That is, you have a device, you put a certain uh, signal in, and you get a certain signal out, and you want to know the ratio of those over a range of frequencies. You want to know if I put in, say, minus 10 dB on this side, and I get uh, minus 5 dB on this side, that means there's a gain of 5 dB. Uh, we'll talk about decibels later. Basically, though, that is transmission. Uh, the uh, uh, To use a, a favorite uh, joke in uh, among ham radio operators, this is the gazinta and this is the gazauta. <laughs> in other words, this is where the signal goes into and this is where the signal goes out of. Okay, I said we were going to mention the the those S11, S21s, and so on. Don't worry about them. The S just simply stands for scattering. Doesn't matter if you ever remember that, except when you're looking it up on Wikipedia, of course. It just means that you're dealing with a device that has two ports or more, but at any rate, at any given time, you're interested in the effect of one port on the other port. And all that S's uh, scattering parameters do is the, the subscripts just refer to the ratio of the thing you're measuring. S11, you're measuring port 1 to port 1. In other words, the, it goes in and it comes right back out. You want to measure what went in, you want to measure what came back. S21 is port 2 relative to port 1. S22 is port 2 relative to port 2. Once again, goes in here, comes back out the same port. S12 is port 1 relative to port 2. In other words, that's where a signal is being fed backwards. You're feeding it into port 2, and you want to measure port 1 relative to port 2. P1 relative to P2. Okay, well, this video is now long enough. Let's move on to part 2, but for now, have a nice day.